So, we have a different way of thinking about and measuring the cost of LED strips. We've been playing around with this idea for a while, but the way we think about doing it is that we want to do a price per microwatt of UV irradiance. Um, <clears throat> so for this test today, we've taken the normal LED strip, black light LED strip that people purchase on Amazon for really, really cheap. It's uh, like $19 for five meters for this strip. Um, <clears throat> this is 395 na uh, nanometers. Uh, it's very hard to find any 365 nanometer strip out there on Amazon that's not expensive. So we've gone with the two leading uh, UV strips on the market, and that is the Wavefarm Real UV uh, 365 nanometer strip and ours, which is the verified UV version 2 365 nanometer strip. For the purpose of this test, we're thinking about platinum and palladium printing, which is in the 365 nanometer sensitivity range. So a lot of people are buying these uh, fairly cheap LEDs and then they're trying to do platinum and palladium and cyanotype printing with those LEDs. And those LEDs are um, uh, pretty weak and causing a lot of time and waste and wasted energy and wasted time. And possibly actually more expensive in reality per watt hour or per microwatt. So today we're gonna go up and, and test this really cheap LED and then the much more expensive wave, waveform real LED. And then we're gonna test the even more expensive uh, verified or slightly more expensive verified uh, UV version two LED, which is what we sell. Um, so you can follow me up the stairs to our very dirty testing area. <laughs> So for the sake of this um, demo, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be using an Ian Leak version four unit with a sensor that's um, filtered for 365 nanometer, uh, roughly, for platinum palladium sensitivity. It does pick up 395 as well, a little bit, I believe. Ian Leak can confirm that. Um, and we're just going to be using this transformer. So all the variables are the same, right? So our uh, bus bars and connectors are the same. The distance from the LEDs to the uh, sensor are going to be about 1.5 inches. Um, and we tried to space the LED chips as close together as possible um, <clears throat> for all of these experiments. So we're trying to put out as much wattage as possible per uh, LED. These, uh, the voltage on this is 12 volts um, and its amperage is maybe slightly less than our, our more high powered meanwhile converters. So um, in reality, the amount of irradiance can be juiced a bit more than what we're, we're going to be sensing today. However, this is just to uh, give us, uh, uh, to remove all the separate variables and only show the radiance coming out, uh, keeping all the other variables the same. So we don't need to worry too much about how much wattage is coming from this power unit. So the first thing we're gonna test is this uh, Sheng Pu Da, 900, uh, 395 nanometer board. That's eight dollars and ninety nine cents per five meters, um, and we'll connect that together. And let me turn this Ian Link unit on. We're good. 
Okay, so just make sure all of the LED lights are on. They are. And we are reading 92.7 microwatts UW. Okay, so that's the cheapest of the cheap. Now we're gonna go with something that's uh, basically 10 times the cost. You'll notice on this waveform that these are um, wider LED strips and therefore the connectors are wider and that's causing, you know, maybe four or five millimeters of distance between these uh, strips, which is lowering the amount of chips per square inch slightly. So this is a 365 nanometer uh, LED and everything's on. And we are measuring a whopping 3,161 microwatts per centimeter squared. So now we're going to try our our LEDs here. Now you'll notice that these are actually a thinner um, strip, so we can pack these a little closer together. And this thing wants to go over just slightly. Okay. I think it was three one six two. I think it was so. On the last. Okay. So I'll just verify that everything's turned on here. You don't want to look at these lights with your eyeballs. I have a protection on. And we are at four thousand four hundred and twenty. Well, 4,400 and it's going up. 4,430-ish. All right, so 4,430 on these ones. 4,430 and then the uh, the waveform was 3,162, and the uh, 395 nanometer one was 92.7. So we'll, we'll uh, go down stairs and we'll figure out our calculations, our price per microwatt, essentially. So we can start with our most expensive LED. And with our most expensive LED, we're getting 4,430 uh, microwatts per cm squared, right? So that would be $212 divided by 4,430. And that works out to be about, uh, let's see, 4.78 cents per microwatt. Okay, 
4.78 cents per microwatt. So, let's go with our, our waveform. That was uh, 3,162 roughly. I'm forgetting, but it was right around there. We could even round up and do 3,200. Give it the benefit of the doubt here. So that's 195 divided by 3,200. And that works out to be 6.09 cents per microwatt. So we have 4.78 cents per microwatt, which is ending up being uh, cheaper per radiance unit to 6.09. Now, let's look at this one. This one is only putting out 92.7 microwatts per square centimeter, and that's of uh, 365 light. So let's look at it, 92.7. And that is uh, $18.99. So 18.99 divided by 92.7. That comes out to a whopping 21.56 cents per microwatt of UV. So the most expensive LED by far is this cheap doll, cheap 18 and 99 cents per five meter one. The next most expensive is the waveform. 609 centimeters or cents per microwatt and the next and most cheap is actually ours 4.78 uh, cents per microwatt part of that is because you can stack these leds quite close so there you have it When you actually look at the cost per radiance unit, sometimes the cheapest LED is actually the one that costs the most per meter.